we are at 85 year old Pamunik Bakery Cafe. Uh, our speaker today, magreti kayo ng mga questions yung uh, people uh, here via Facebook Live or via Zoom. Mr. Orion Perez Dumdum, our very eloquent speaker, is principal co-founder of the Correct Movement. Uh, by the way, if his face looks familiar, Chilean resource speaker in um, many hearings in Congress about charter change in the past several years. Mr. Orion Perez Dumdum spearheads a campaign to enlighten the Filipino public about the issues on constitutional reform and the need to rectify our economic uh, situation, our lack of economic competitiveness and transformation. Uh, he hopes to redirect the future of the Philippines by encouraging economic competitiveness. Uh, he is an overseas Filipino worker based in Singapore. He draws inspiration from his experiences in progressive nations with uh, parliamentary systems. He has witnessed the profound and systemic impact uh, of uh, alam niya in lack of local and foreign investments, why it uh, results in high unemployment and other problems. Uh, he is a dynamic force in the information technology sector where he navigates systems with a blend of logic and objectivity. Uh, Orion prioritizes practical and crucial points and ideas in debates on charter change. He said he is half Cebuano and half Tagalog and uh, grew up in Cebu City. Uh, that's why he also advocates federalism. Uh, for people who are a, a little bit older, Conte, uh, he is. Uh, he also became well known years ago uh, for being a standout winner as uh, a RPN9 quiz show, Battle of the Brains. Uh, ko din sa kanya yan. Uh, his piece, The Parable of the Mountain Bike, is part of Bob Ong's best-selling compilation of essays and has earned well-deserved recognition. Uh, Ibitay natin, let us invite Orion Perez to, to, to make an opening statement. Afterwards, uh, let us ask uh, freely any frank or even critical questions. Sabi niya, any questions he is willing to answer. Uh, welcome, Mr. Orion Perez Dumdo. Okay. Um, Maraming salamat, uh, Wilson. Thank you very much for uh, for having me here, inviting me. Thank so, you for coming back pala. <laughs> yeah, second time ko na to dito. Last time, naka-zoom lang tayo. Naka-zoom lang tayo. Ngayon talagang naka-live tayo dito. So, um, essentially, uh, I am pro-constitutional reform. Uh, I would like to use the term constitutional reform because my problem with the word charter change is it is an only in the Philippines term na laging sinisira ng ibang taong kumukontra, gagawin nilang cha-cha para magbuka siyang, ay, parang sayaw lang yan, purong sulong. Pero if you hear the word constitutional reform, nawawala yung uh, negative context. No? Kasi ang word Constitutional reform is actually the correct term used internationally. Manonood kayo ng CNN, BBC, ganyan. Never nyo maririnig yung salitang charter change. Only in the Philippines po yan. So kami po sa correct movement, we advocate, we basically advocate three main reforms. The first reform is the removal of anti-foreign direct investment restrictions in the Constitution. Why is that important? It's important because we want the Philippines to have a lot of jobs. So how do you get a lot of jobs? You allow the entry of many companies. Companies that may be from abroad, 
companies, even, even local companies, or local companies that have foreign backing, money, and technology, and know-how. So what we want is to do what many successful countries that used to be poor have done, which is yumaman sila, dahil dati sila mahirap, yumaman sila dahil pinapasok nila ang sobrang daming foreign direct investors. Sino yung mga ganyan? Singapore po ang nag-pioneer niya dito sa, sa Asia. Nakita ni Lee Kuan Yew dati na wala sila masyadong local businessmen nung time na yon. Ang ginawa ni Lee Kuan Yew, okay, kung wala masyadong mga businessmen, at kung meron tayong businessmen, puro buy and sell lang, walang mga industrialists, let's bring in the foreign investors, let's bring in the multinational companies. Let them come in, total mag-create naman sila ng maraming trabaho, at pag dumami ang mga trabaho, ang mga tao na dating walang trabaho, na may trabaho na ngayon, magiging nagbabayad ng buwis. At pag nagbayad sila ng buwis, ang gobyerno magkakaroon ng pera, panggawa ng mga kalye, ng mga tulay, kung ano man pang mga uh, hospitals, schools. Mapapataas natin ang pagpasweldo ng ating mga government officials. Mawawala ang corruption. Yun ang, yun ang ginawa ni Lee Kuan Yew. That's what he did in order to make Singapore, the richest country in Asia in terms of GDP per capita. Okay? So, bring in foreign direct investors by removing restrictions inside the constitution that discourage them from coming in. Secondly, hindi naman po pwede, we cannot have that all of the investors or most of the investors that come, most of the companies, the multinationals that come to the Philippines will all locate themselves in Metro Manila. We want to spread them out to the rest of the country. We want them to go to Region 1, Region 2, Region 3, all the different regions, not just NCR. What do we need to do to make that happen? Federalism. If we have federalism, we can then change the situation, we change the incentive scheme so that regions are able to attract investors. They are able to make decisions that are appropriate for their own situation. They can say things like, we will change the taxation structure here, we'll make it cheaper for businesses to come in, maybe lower the, ta lower the taxes, etc., etc. They will probably provide certain incentives. It's up to them. And for that reason, you have countries like Switzerland, for example, or Germany, which are federal, and as a result, their taxes are actually lower than many countries in Europe, which are unitary. Kumpara natin, Switzerland na federal versus Sweden na unitary. Sino mas maba, mataas ang, ang, uh, ang tax? Sino mas mababang tax? Nakikita natin na Switzerland has lower taxes in general kasi nagpo-compete yung mga different cantons against each other to attract investors. Sweden, on the other hand, is unitary. So ang tax, well, yun nga, it's one, one policy, one size fits all. The whole of Sweden is pretty much the same way. Walang internal competition masyado. Another situation I saw with my own eyes. I used to work in Philips, Dutch company, when I was in Singapore. And um, I went, of course, to, to the Netherlands. And I visited a friend who lived on Kirkrade. Kirkrade is actually on the border of uh, the Netherlands and uh, and Germany, okay? And there's one street there that, that divides them. So, yung mga tao na nandun sa Dutch side, sa Netherlands side, nagko-cross lang sila para makapag-shopping doon sa German side. Bakit? Kasi mas mura ang bilihin doon. Bakit? Kasi mas mura ang taxes sa Germany kumpara sa Netherlands. Netherlands is unitary. Germany is a Bundesrepublik, which is a federal republic. So, ganun, federalism, nagkakaroon ng internal competition yung mga regions, yung mga states or lender or cantons or sa Canada, provinces. No? Yun yung nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng kompetensya, kaya bumababa yung general taxation. General, well, maybe not in Canada because Canada is has a different set of ideas. But, generally speaking, many countries that are federal, have lower taxes. Compare Malaysia, which is federal versus the Philippines, which is unitary. Malaysia has lower taxes than the, than the Philippines. So, if we 
move to a federal system, a federal structure of territorial administration, we will be able to empower the different regions of the Philippines to attract investors, both local and foreign, to come to their areas. Tayong mga, katulad ko, na, na, na taga Cebu, originally taga Cebu, we won't need to come to Metro Manila to find work. Yung mga probinsyano, hindi na kinakailangan magtagsaan sa Metro Manila. Pwede po tayong magkakaroon ng mga magagandang matataas na sweldo na trabaho sa ating mga sariling hometown at mga home regions natin pag nag-federalism tayo. Ngayon, unitary tayo, kaya lahat nasa Metro Manila, ayan, sobra na ang traffic natin. Di po ba? So, gusto nyo maayos ang traffic? Federalism po kinakailangan. Gusto nyo mag-spread out ang development sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas? Mag-federalism po tayo. At huwag magpapadala sa mga fake news na ginagawa ng napakaraming mga taong may vested interests in retaining the lousy system na minadali nung ginawa siya. Alright, that's number two. Okay? Number three, we want to have good quality leadership, efficient governance, lower corruption, and to be able to do that, we need a form of government that enables this to happen. And in the research that we've done ever since, we found out with so many PhD um, authored white papers and dissertations that me and my team have gone through, kitang kita talaga po na sobrang superior ng performance ng parliamentary system kumpara sa presidential system. So, Magtatanong siguro kayo, bakit? Bakit ganyan? Akala ko ba presidential eh, may, may separation of powers para may, may check and balance. Yun ang check, yung check and balance ng sistema natin ngayon ay actually nagpa-block. Yung gusto natin gawin to ay block yan. Block. Yan ang iagawa. Gusto ng gawin ng executive, yung pa-block ng legislative. Gusto ng legislative, yung pwedeng i-block ng veto ng, ng, uh, ng executive. Hindi magandang sistema yan. Ang mas magandang sistema ng checks and balance ay yung meron sa parliamentary system na kung saan yung ruling party sa loob ng lehislatura ang nagiging gobyerno. Sila yung nagiging administration. Tapos yung natalo, yung hindi ganun karaming seats pero malakas, malakas pa rin sila, nagiging opposition sila. The, gover the majority party forms the government so lahat, lahat ng kanilang mga ministers ay manggagaling doon sa ruling party or sa ruling bloc or coalition at magkakaroon din ng shadow cabinet or shadow government na galing sa oposisyon. Ano ginagawa ng shadow cabinet? Yung shadow cabinet, yung po yung parang equivalent na from the other side, from the opposition side, na nakapag nagmo-monitor sa anumang ginagawa ng mga government officials, ng mga ministers. So kunyari, kung meron tayong Minister of Finance, Minister of uh, of Education, Minister of Minister for Health, Minister for Defense, etc. Meron din shadow shadow minister for finance, shadow minister for home affairs or, or internal government. Meron din uh, for for health, no? Shadow shadow minister for defense, etc. At ano nangyayari? Every Every ministry, department, well, pag nagbimiting sila, syempre ang nagpe-preside ay yung mismong minister na galing sa majority party. Siya yung nagdadala, siya yung minister. Pero laging present sa meeting ang taga-oposisyon, nakabantay sa lahat ng ginagawa at ng pinag-uusapan sa loob ng meeting. At lahat ng dokumento, lahat ng resibo, lahat ng PO, lahat ng mga anything to do with bibili-bili, ng kahit anong mga supplies or whatever, pati yung Ministry for Defense, Ministry of Defense, gusto bumili ng mga tanke, aeroplano, baril, yung mga mga quotation ng mga kumpanya, uh, na yung mga defense contractor, yung mga resibo, nakikita hindi lamang ng mga nasa administrasyon, pero obligado silang bigyan talaga ng kopya ang taga-oposisyon. So nakabantay lagi ang taga-oposisyon. Eh siyempre ang oposisyon, gusto nilang sila, sila mananalo sa next election eh. So maghahanap lagi ng butas yan. So binubusisi lagi nila anong ginagawa ng gobyerno. Yan ang rason kung bakit superior 
ang parliamentary system. Yan ang rason kung bakit pag tinignan natin ang Transparency International na Corruption Percep Perception Index, tinignan natin yung listing ng lahat ng mga bansa o according to least corrupt to most corrupt. You will find, you look at the top 30 countries in that list, top 30 countries, majority nila parliamentary. Tapos dun sa bottom, la, the, the worst in terms of corruption, last 30, 30, mahikita natin, mostly presidential. And of course, we also have a lot of studies to prove that. So there's a study by uh, three economists, um, si Norman Luisa, si Rodrigo Suarez, at saka si um, Daniel Leverman, mga Latin American um, sila na nag-aaral sa US. Gumawa sila ng study na kinumpara nila presidential versus parliamentary. Ginawa nila ng mga statistical regression analysis at lumabas talaga na talagang significantly higher ang corruption pag presidential system. Lower corruption, higher transparency, higher efficiency pag parliamentary system. And they're not the only ones who made that same kind of, that, that kind of uh, study. There was another study made by Boston University, specifically by uh, John Gehring and Strom Thacker. Ganun din ang kalabasan. It was a different study, but made in a different year. Pero ang kalabasan, ganun din. Pag parliamentary, less prone to corruption. Pag presidential, more prone to corruption. Kasi sa presidential system, walang nakabantay sa, sa executive. Sa parliamentary, meron lagi nakabantay. Real-time pa. Real-time monitoring. Ako, galing ako sa IT, mas maganda yung real time kaysa sa after the fact. Kasi ang final style sa sistema natin ngayon, pagkatapos nagkaroon ng desisyon, tapos na-implement na, na tayo na gano'n, doon na lang nagkakaroon ng punahan, doon na lang nagkakaroon ng pagbabatikos. Hindi. Sa parliamentary system, pwede magkaroon ng real time na pagbabatikos. And in a parliamentary system, makikita nyo, kung tingnan nyo sa YouTube, puntahan niyo yung mga British parliamentary debates, makikita nyo kung sino ang pinakamataas na, na official na decision maker, yung prime minister, ay ginigisa, ginigisa ng mga tao sa loob ng parliament galing sa posisyon. So pwede sila magtanong ng mga maraming tanong. And in fact, most of the time, laging ginigisa ang prime minister ng leader of the opposition who is like the shadow prime minister. Okay? So kung sana nalaman po ng maraming mga Pilipino na mas maganda pala talaga ang parliamentary system. Dapat ang parliamentary system na tayo dati pa. In fact, 1948 pa lang, isinusulong na ni Claro M. Recto na lumipat sana ang Pilipinas sa parliamentary system. Bakit? Kasi nakita niya mas maganda ang parliamentary system. Pinag-aralan niya, nakita niya ang British style system. So he really pushed for that. Kaya nga nagkaroon tayo ng Noong 1970 ano, uh, Constitutional Convention, bakit nag-shift to presidential? Ano, from presidential to parliamentary. Bakit dapat nag-parliamentary tayo? Hindi po si Marcos Sr. ang nag-anukala nag niya. Na? Hindi po siya. It was the members, the delegates of the Constitutional Convention that made that decision to go with the parliamentary system. So, ganun po, lang, ganun po talaga yun. Now, if you all do your research, makikita po ninyo, mas maganda talaga ang parliamentary system. Okay? Um, sana po, you don't, just, don't just take my word for it. Do your research on it. Do your due diligence on it. Makikita po ninyo, internationally, kinala talaga ang parliamentary system as being way, 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 way better on so many different performance indices. So, um, yun po, Tatlo po ang, ang sinusulong namin sa correct movement. Number one, pagtatanggal ng mga anti-foreign direct investment restrictions sa loob ng constitution para dumami ang mga investors, para dumami ang mga trabaho, para sana mas maraming trabaho kaysa sa mga Pilipino at hindi na natin kinakailangan maging OFW na malayo sa ating mga pamilya. Diba? Imbis na magpapadala tayo ng mga OFW sa labas, bakit hindi na lang ang mga kumpanya na nasa labas ay pumunta sa Pilipinas? para magkaroon ng trabaho mga Pilipino, para hindi tayo naglalayo sa ating mga mahal sa buhay? Yan ang tanong ko. Ba't hindi natin naisip yan? Kasi nag-nationalistic yung iba, ay, let's protect the, the local tycoons, the local businessmen. 
Pero yung ibang local businessmen, mayayaman na. Ang kailangan ng proteksyon, ang kailangan ng trabaho ay ang mga ordinaryo, patulad nating mga poor and middle class. Yung mga namamasukan, yun yung kailangan ng trabaho. And eventually, some of us, pag gumanda ang aming ang situation natin, ay eh, nagiging businessman din. Ganun lang yun. Ganun lang nangyari sa Singapore. Eh. Okay? So yun yung una. Dumami ang trabaho by removing the restrictions. Number two, para hindi lahat magsiksikan sa Metro Manila, hindi lahat ng trabaho ay nasa Metro Manila lang, mag-spread out yan, federalism. At para magkaroon ng mas magandang, efficienting sistema, parliamentary system, hindi yung sistema na meron tayo ngayon, na bulok at walang kwenta. In fact, hindi nga American system ang nagayon natin eh. Although we thought we were copying the American system, we ended up emulating the Mexican system. Bakit? Because we have the exact same term limits that Mexico has. Ha? La verdad es que tenemos el sistema de, Me de Mexico, cabrones. Señores y señoras, la verdad es que lo que tenemos hoy en día es un sistema que no funciona. Sorry. Um, y sinasabi natin, mga kababayan, eh yung sistema na meron tayo ay yung gaya ng nasa Me Mexico. Yung, yung nasa Mexico, one term president na six years lang din. El sexenio ang tawag na. Sexenio ang tawag nila sa one term presidency. Na six years. Kaya nga sexenio eh. Kasi six years. Yun yung meron tayo. Kahit ang galing-galing ng Pangulo, hindi sa pwedeng tumagal sa pwesto. Hindi tayo magkakaroon ng likwan niyo sa Pilipinas na 30 years na dahil sa ang galing-galing niya na kapag 30 years, hindi tayo magkakaroon ng ganyan dahil kinakailangan laging umalis pagkatapos kahit ang galing-galing niya. Di ba? Six years lang. Kaya ba ng mga long-term projects sa six years? Hindi. Di ba? Tapos, yung mga term terms ng mga uh, lower officials, ganun din. Sa, sa Mexico, two terms, two six-year terms lang din ang kanilang senators. Tapos, two, uh, unlike us, three, three-year terms. La verdad es que tenemos el mismo tipo de resultado que en México. We have the same results as Mexico. Yun po mga kababayan. Sana po mapag-aralan ng marami mga Pilipino kung bakit mas maganda itong mga isinusulong namin. Kami po sa Correct Movement, nasa social media kami nagsimula, 2010, late 2010. Hindi po kami, wala, kami po ordinary mga tao lang kami mga OFW mostly, at mga estudyante, mga ordinary professionals. Nagsimula kami puro mga IT professionals, engineers, mga medical professionals, architects, ganun yung mga taong galing sa mga technical na trabaho. Kasi gusto namin maintindihan, bakit ganito? Mas maganda yung ganitong sistema kaysa na ganyan sistema. Dahil ganun po yung mga trabaho namin, nag analyze kami ng mga algorithms, nag analyze po kami ng, ng mga sistema, nag kami ng mga um, itong mga problema, no? mga loopholes, itong mga inefficiencies sa mga algorithm, etc. Ganyan kasi trabaho namin. Eh. Di ba? Nakita namin. At in lumalabas, mas naintindihan namin kaysa, no offense, sa maraming lawyers. Maraming kumukunta sa mga constitution, sa constitutional reform na to mga lawyers. Pero marami sa mga engineers, marami sa mga IT professionals na nakakaintindi. Alam namin na mas maganda to. Mas maganda ang ganitong sistema, itong parliamentary system, mas maganda ang federalism, federalism para sa Pilipinas, at mas maganda na maging bukas tayo sa pagpasok ng mga foreign direct investors. Kasi, lalo lang kaming mga OFW, nakikita namin anong nangyayari sa labas ng bansa. Nakikita namin na napag-iwanan na tayo. Ako po, sa trabaho ko dati sa Singapore, um, nagtatravel ako, regional po yung trabaho, trabaho ko as uh, project manager. Kinakailangan ko pumunta sa iba't ibang mga bansa. Nakikita ako talaga eh. At napapaiyak ako na dati, itong bansang to, mas mahirap kaysa sa Pilipinas. Una kong pagdating sa Singapore, nalaman ng cab driver na sinakyan ko. Eh yan, ay, yo, yo, Filipino ah. Yes sir, I'm a Filipino. Eh you know ah, uh, Philippines ah, before ho, Philippines used to be the richest country in Southeast Asia. 
Đấy nhân trang, richest country. Singapore, Philippines used to be the richest country. Philippines used to be the richest country in Southeast Asia. Singapore, we used to be poorer than you. In fact, Hong Kong people, women from Hong Kong, go to Philippines to become made before. Now it's the other way around. Why? Ah? What happened? Baliktad na ngayon. Dati 1950s, maraming mga maratandang dalaga, ganyan, galing sa Hong Kong, pumupunta sa Pilipinas, nagiging made para sa mga para sa mga mayabang mga pamilya, mga middle class na families. Ngayon, baliktad na. Dagsa-dagsaan ng mga Pilipinas sa Hong Kong at sa Singapore at iba't ibang mga bansa. Bakit? Kasi walang trabaho. Yung iba dyan, puro mga accounting graduate, iba dyan, kum laude, kum laude pa, pero yung iba dyan, public school teacher, pero naging mate. Bakit? Kasi mababang sweldo. Bakit mababang sweldo? Simple law of supply and demand. Sobra, sobra, sobrang dami ang mga aplikante, konting, 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 konti lang ang trabaho. Pag sobrang konti ng trabaho, sobrang dami ng aplikante, ano nangyari? Umababa ang job offer. Singapore, baliktad. Mas maraming trabaho, mas maraming job opening kaysa sa mga aplikante, kaysa sa mga citizen. Law of supply and demand, dahil mas maraming trabaho kaysa sa mga aplikante, mataas ang sweldo. Simple lang. Yun sana ang ginawa natin. Eh. Diba? So, yun lang po. Sana maintindihan po natin na itong tatlong reformo ito, gusto po namin ma-educate ang maraming mga tao. Meron po kami website Uh, correctphilippines.org Puntahan po ninyo yan. Marami po, marami po kami mga resources. Um, marami po, po kami mga research. Marami kami mga articles. Matututunan ninyo kung bakit mas maganda na baguhin na natin ang lumang sistema na hindi pala gumagana masyado para sa atin. Meron po tayong tinatawag na operating system ng Pilipinas. Yung operating system natin ay yung konstitusyon. Meron po tayong mga cellphone, computer, hindi ba, hindi ba gusto natin naka-upgrade, naka-update ang ating operating system para latest? Hindi man lang natin na-update or upgrade ang ating operating system. Not a single, kahit ni isang tuldo, ni isang letra, hindi na bago sa 1987 Constitution. Luma pa rin. Just lahat sa economic system, sa political system, sa structure of territorial administration natin. Mali-mali, kasi minadali. Four months lang, gagawa ng konstitusyon. Four months lang. Ang pag... In 86, natin nilagyan ng maraming mga restrictions against foreign direct investors. At the same time, in 1986, ha? late 1986, yun din yung panahon na kailan ang Vietnam, na isang supposedly communist country, ay nagtanggang maging kapitalistang bansa at naging bukas sa pagpasok ng foreign investors. Binago nila ang sistema nila, nagkaroon sila yung tinatawag na Goymoy Reforms. Itong Goymoy Reforms, ito po yung renovation reforms ang tinatawag. Ito po yung reforms na nagbago sa sistemang ekonomiya ng Vietnam. At ang Vietnam ay isa sa mga fastest growing economies dito sa sa lahat sa Southeast Asia. Kitang-kita po natin. Ako po, nakapunta ako doon, very impressed ako. So, naungusan na tayo. Late 2021, naungusan tayo ng Vietnam. Galing. Uh, thank you for your opening statement, Mr. Orion. Perez, dum dumi mga tanong na kasi. Uh, excited mga tao magtanong. But before we go to the question and answer, I'd like to acknowledge a special guest natin dito one of the best political analysts in the country, you are very privileged to have him here, si Professor Alex Magno. Uh, sikat na uh, columnist of Philippine Star and one of the best professors in Philippine ano, uh, political science. Magaling yan. Brilliant. I have quoted his articles before, his pro uh, constitutional uh, reform articles yeah. a lot. Yeah, you are very lucky. Kasi kahit na senator, minsan hindi niya pinupuntahan. Uh, ano, namimili siguro ng matalino I have quoted I have quoted his articles and I have shared and spammed and spread and ah, shared wow. before. I featured this article in our wow. website. Yeah, very good to have him here physically. And then uh, of course Magaling siya. And beside him pala, si Mr. George Swachan is the 
Government Liaison Committee Chairman and Board Member of the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry in Pantagupan City. I say he wants to hear what you have to say. I say he is involved in government liaison. So marami siyang kilalang mga legislators and politicians that he could share your ideas to. So thank you to all the other people who are here, especially media friends. May tanong tayo, nakiwosap isang tao sa Amerika kasi kami na daw sa Amerika is uh, Malu C. Mariano from Long Beach, California. Ano siya? Uh, Filipino based in California. Uh, gabi daw doon ngayon. Uh, he's not a law she's not a lawyer, she's not a politics expert. She just wants to ask from you a very short summary now ng advantages and disadvantages of courts institutional or Okay. Um, actually, there are really, really so many pros. And, yes. There's so many pros. I mean, number one, we need to change our system. That's the that's the truth. We need to upgrade our system. We need to Luma na talaga ang sistema natin. So, matagal nang kinakailangan baguhin yun. In fact, hindi lang sa sa Luma, pero mali. Nagkamali sila during the 1986 Constitutional Commission, they were choosing between the presidential and parliamentary system. And many people there were already saying we need to have a parliamentary system because it's better. It was already coming out that the, the, the findings of the superiority of the, the parliamentary system were already coming out in the in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. No? But then some people there said, kasi sanay tayo. we're used to the presidential system. So Let's let's go with it. And then nagkaroon ng botohan by one vote lang. Natalo by one vote one lang. One vote lang. Naging presidential tayo kahit na ba mas maganda pala talaga ang parliamentary system. So yun ang, you know, ganyan, kinakailangan talaga baguhin. Sorry, may tanong din pala dito tatlo. I forgot to, uh, sorry to interrupt you. May tatlo na tanong dito na they like your ideas now. They're listening to your idea. They like your arguments about uh, need for charter change. Ang problema, sabi ng uh, the, the controversy daw, it's because the one supposedly pushing this good idea daw is a controversial politician daw, sabi ng isa. Uh, may nagsabi nito na taga media na si uh, allegedly Speaker Martin Romualdez na supposedly controversial. What is your comment and recommendation to the public about this? Okay, uh, I urge everybody to stay away from personality politics and to please first understand how the House of Representatives works, okay? Number one, the speaker does not have absolute superiority over the rest of the chamber. He does not. He's only one person with one vote. He's only a first, a primus inter pares, a first among equals. So... In reality, if you really look at it, hindi naman siya talaga ang nag-push nito. Who pushed for it? Ang nag-push nito una, last year pa, ay yung House Committee on Constitutional Am Amendments headed by Rufus Rodriguez. And hindi lang si Rufus Rodriguez, maraming iba't ibang mga kongresista ang tumutumulong dyan. Congressman Richard, uh, Richard Gomez, si... Ano, si uh, Stella Kimbo, si Joey Salceda, ang dami-daming, si Tito Garbin, ang dami-daming mga tao tumutulong dyan. Okay, sa pagtalini yung mga minensyon mo. It's a collective effort in in the committee. no? And then, hindi lang sa committee, nung pinasa nila, pina, pina, pinakita nila sa plenaryo, mga overwhelming, parang all, the whole chamber, except for seven people, voted for it. Gusto nila na magbago ang konstitusyon. Last year yun. Pero pagdating sa Senado, sa Senado, apat lang ang gusto. Si Senator Tolentino, Senator Bato, Senator uh, Bongo, at saka si Senator Robin Padilla, na kilala ko. Ah. May talo pa ako, sorry, may, may nagtatanong pa dito, na people of, uh, like me, not politics expert, what will prevail sa tingin mo? Kasi, uh, hindi kami knowledgeable about the details. May nagsasabi, constitutional convention daw, you will elect delegate. May nagsasabi, constituent assembly. Tapos, may nagsasabi, people's initiative, can you please explain the differences and what will really happen now? 
Okay, what is I think Jan said from what's happening now? Okay, uh, before that, I'll finish the one on the first one. So, yeah. yung first one, sinasabi ko, last year pa sinusulong yan. Last year pa. Tapos, nasupalpal ng Senado kasi hindi nakulangan sa votes. Rules nila is that kung meron kang pinapasa ngayong year na to, tapos hindi na pasa, pwede next year try again. Ito po yun yung try again na yan. Kasi tinry nila last year, hindi gumana. O try again ngayon. Bakit? Porkit nagkaroon ng kontrobersya na hindi ninyo gusto yung taong to, hindi ninyo gusto susupalpalin ninyo yung buong panukala. You're gonna throw away the baby with the bathwater? So last year pa to, kasi last you were, pa to. I was you one, were of, one of the resource I was one of the resource persons in the hearing. So many other people went there. Sinusupalpal yung mga efforts ng mga taong bayan, katulad ko, na OFW, na pumunta dun sa house para magbigay ng inputs. Diba? Parang, sino, ta, dahil lang sa ayaw ng ibang tao sa isang tao, na, na iisa lang ang boto na kung tutuusin, yung posisyon na yan ay replaceable. Ba replaceable ang speaker. Bakit? Nung panahon ni Duterte, ilan ba yung mga naging speaker natin? Di ba apat? Di ba dati si, Al si Alvarez, Speaker Alvarez, tapos nag-change ni uh, Speaker uh, GMA? Uh, 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 And then after that, nagkaroon tayo ng bago si si Cayetano. And then after Cayetano, si Velas, apat! Uh, apat pala yung one third. Oo, oh, nagkaroon tayo ng maraming speaker nung time. So ibig sabihin, pag speaker ka, hindi porket speaker pa ngayon, speaker ka forever or during the whole six-year term, hindi eh. So it's actually more democratic. Yeah, it's, you're not stuck with the... You're not stuck. That, that is a position that is replaceable. Pwedeng matanggal, you know, pwedeng magkaroon ng reshuffling na magbabago. Baka next month, baka may magbabago. So, ano, kontra pa rin kayo sa constitutional reform dahil, ano, o ayaw nyo, yung, yung taong ayaw nyo, eh, wala na pala dyan. I mean, ito yung sinasabi ko, huwag kayong maging masyadong naka-focus naka right, sa isang tao right. lang. Kasi um, the way things work in Congress is one person, one vote. Yung, dahil nandun siya sa posisyon, eh, kaya niyang ipataw yung kanyang kagustuhan dun sa iba. Hindi. hindi that's not how Congress works. We, we have a question okay. here. Uh, the second, uh, the second. Uh, wait, uh, the uh, difference of... Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Ano, 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 nila? ano yun? tinatawag na people's initiative, yan ba, tapos, can you summarize it lang, and the other options, and what is going to happen now, based on your analysis, may okay. chance ba, how do you forecast, or see this, okay. report now? So, according to, uh, according to Article 17, there are three modes of uh, changing the Constitution. The, the first one is a constituent assembly, constituent assembly, that requires a three-fourths vote of both houses. Problem is, hindi nakasulat dun sa ating constitution kung jointly or separately ba ang uh, gagawin. So what will happen? So, the people's initial... Uh, wait, so that's the first one. The second one is constitu constitutional convention. You know? Constitutional convention, you will... When you convene a constitutional convention, you're telling... You're, you're, you're basically saying, okay, we're going to call for an election where we will have ordinary people from different districts uh, running to become delegates and those who win they will become delegates to the constitutional convention and they will give their inputs to create a new constitution but a congress, so parang, this is a congress. they're a parallel congress oh, wow. parallel congress composed of non-congressmen oh wow okay number three number three people's initiative you know so people's initiative it, it's basically Coming from ordinary people. So as we know, it's coming from Pirma. Pirma is the same group from the 1990s time with President Ramos oh. that were pushing for changes to the constitution. Itong grupo na to matagal na silang nag, uh, nagsusulong nito. 12%, 12 kailangan nila makuha. 12%, 12% of how many? 12% uh, of the entire Philippines, if I'm not mistaken. The voting population of the whole population? Of the voting population, uh, the which population. is? I'm not sure. I don't know. Ah, uh, yes. So, ito, may natanong. Based on your analysis and chistis na rin nila ito, yun ay maraming gumalabas sa balita, may chance pa mangyari itong the third option or it can be blocked by the Senate? Kasi nakita ko yung news two days ago all over the headlines. All the senators unanimously oppose this. Can they block it legally they, or they not? Cannot. I'm sorry to say, senators, you cannot block it because ah, this is coming from the people. There is nothing in the Constitution that says that you have the ability to block it. You cannot. This is coming from the people. I support it myself. I support it. 
so, so, so many other so far, I chance if you'll push through with or without they, the Senate. They got the signatures. And um, how many percent are they in for? 12 percent. I don't ah. think they've reached it already, if I'm not mistaken. Ah. But anyway, um, for me, it's like this. The, the thing about the People's Initiative is ideally it happens, then yes, it forces the Senate to be joined together with the Congress. Why? With, with the oh, House. No. Why? Well, for the, traditionally, since the 1987 Constitution, the Senate has always been blocking constitutional reform. May mga magagandang panukala galing sa Kamara, and the people from the, from the House, from the lower House, are representatives of different sectors and constituencies. People from the Senate, they do not have any constituencies. They are mini presidents voted at large nationwide. So they do, they do not have, unlike in the USA, where senators ah, federal. come ah, from the states. Ah. Sa atin, wala eh. Lahat naka, naka national, nationwide. Ano, eh. diba? So name recall talaga ang nangyayari. Kahit magaling ka, eh, hindi ka naman kilala, hindi ka manalo. So yun ang nangyayari sa sistema natin. Ang nangyayari, may nagiging kayabangan. I'm sorry to say sa mga senator, nagkakaroon ng certain kayabangan ng marami sa kanila na gusto nilang i-block ang any attempt to make even one small slight change sa constitution. Were you blocked during the hearings? Hmm? Were you blocked during the hearings? I don't, did, I don't know. So when you were talking sa Senate, or did they go opposed to that? Um, uh, hindi naman yung senators ang nag ano, kasi yung nasa com uh, committee hearings, ah, mga pro, no, mga pro naman sila. Yes. Uh, pero yung, so of course, dun sa, sa tawag nito, sa house, may mga taga makabayad block na ano na kumukontra pero unfortunately mga makalubang makalubang uh, pag-iisip ng mga lumalabas para mga mga uh, debate so fortunately pero oh. hindi nila alam actually na mas nakakabuti to para sa mga manggagawang Pilipino kung mag tumami ang mga trabaho tumami ang mga kumpanya ang mga ordinaryong mga mag magsasaka at mga mga or mga, mga, mga ordinaryong manggagawa ay magkakaroon ng choice ay Dito sa company A, mababa mo kasi ito, pero may company B at saka C, matataas mo kasi doon na lang kami. How many percent chance magiging successful sa tingin mo ang people's initiative? How do you forecast? I, percentage? I, I'm sorry, I, I really can't. Uh, but you have high hopes? I have high hopes that it can push through. May deadline ba yan? May timetable? I, I really don't know. Because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really connected yes. with the people yes. pushing for it, but there's a question here from uh, editor of Manila right. Times. Uh, may microphone ka. Please take your name again for people to... Yes, welcome. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Aaron Bukida from the Manila Times. Following that uh, event for some time. Uh, Alam niya, ha? Okay, sorry. Uh, I focus mainly on the economic aspect. Oh, no, okay, that's my uh, department. Although, yeah, I should follow the Side, no? Of course, uh, we all know many Filipinos complain about the low cost of living, low inflation, etc. Go to becoming OFW. So, uh, okay. Although I don't read it, but for the benefit of Brian, can you explain to them why this will help uh, make things better economically? Uh, so how will this lessen OFWs and uh, help develop? Great, thanks, thanks for that, Aaron. So, um, it's quite simple. I, I actually explained it earlier. Na na ko to kanina dun sa mahaba ko pasakali. <laughs> but anyway, na kwento ko. Can you summarize it? Uh, na kwento ko na ano na tawag nito. Na kwento ko na kapag if we if we if we remove the anti foreign direct investment restrictions, we send an a signal to the international community, the international business community, that the Philippines is serious about wanting foreign direct investors and multinational companies, global companies, and international investors to come into the Philippines. Pag, pag ginawa natin, pag tinanggal natin yung mga restrictions na yan, parang sinasabi natin, parang ina-announce natin sa buong mundo, we are open for business, we welcome you totally. Ganun ang nangyayari. We're, we're welcoming you. Pag dumating yung mga foreign investors na yan, pag create sila ng mga jobs, they will set up businesses, they will set up offices, they will set up factories. And then, 
Doon pa lang sa paggagawa ng mga pabrika, magdadami yung mga construction projects. Doon pa lang sa pagkatapos ng construction projects, mag-hire sila ng mga empleyado. So, kung maraming mga trabaho, maglelesen yung unemployment problems natin. Eventually, ang gusto natin mangyari is dumami ng dumami ng dumami ang mga trabaho such that mas maraming trabaho, mas maraming job opening kaysa sa mga manggagawa at mga taong naghahanap ng trabaho para magkaroon ng choices. Makakapagpili ang ordinaryong manggagawa na kung eh, sinestress ako nitong kumpanya ko eh, dun sa ikapila, mas mataas ang sweldo, mas less ang stress, lilipat ako. Ngayon, maraming tao walang choice na lumipat. Titikisin na lang nila kasi kung umalis sila sa trabaho, wala silang mahuhuhan trabaho. Pero kung ang daming mga job openings, ikaw, kampante ka na sa umaga, nag-resign ka, sa hapon may mahahanap kang bagong trabaho kasi ang daming openings. Di ba? Yun ang nangyayari sa mga katulad ng Singapore. Mas maraming trabaho kaysa sa mga citizens nila. Yun ang gusto natin mangyari. And that will help the economy because of the law of supply and demand. When there are more jobs than job seekers, tumataas ang sweldo dahil nagkakaroon ng competition ang mga kumpanya. Ay, dito na lang kayo sa amin magtrabaho, huwag doon. Mas mataas kami magpasweldo. Blah, blah, blah. But it's not the talk about we are more communistic in our foreign policies, uh, no, foreign investment policies than a supposedly communist country like Vietnam and China. Yes, unfortunately. Mas communistic tayo. Mas communistic tayo. Actually, itong China and uh, Vietnam, no? More open to foreign More investors. open to foreign investors. I mean, ito, itong si uh, Tong Xiaopio. Dating uh, uh, November of 1978, bumisita yan sa Singapore. Tapos, na-impress siya. Bakit ang daming mga trabaho? Totoo ba 100% pwede mga paprika sa China and Vietnam? Well, to, be, to begin with, in Ayan. China and in Vietnam, wala silang economic restrictions sa loob ng kanilang constitution. Walang 60-40. Walang 60-40 sa kanilang constitution. Ka ka, ka pwede, ako. pwede. I mean, they also have some restrictions also. However, whatever restrictions they have, nasa legislation lang. Wala sa constitution. Uh, hindi forever. Hindi, they can tweak it. Yeah. Tayo kasi sa Pilipinas, sa kayabangan natin dati, or sa siguro sa pagiging sobrang praning natin, linagay natin sa ating constitution yung mga restrictions. Eh ngayon, hindi natin mabago. Hindi natin mabago. Ito ha, kung ikaw ay madalas kang nagsisipilyo, di ba? Every meal, magsisipilyo ka. Saan mo ilalagay ang sipilyo? Sa loob ng, ah, dun sa sa harap lang ng ano ng 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 basin. Kumain lang diyan lang para ready ka sisipilyo ka agad, sisipilyo ka. Or ilalagay mo sa loob ng safe mo. Ha? Tapos yung safe mo, yung safe mo ha, yung hindi lang sa gaganyan ganyanin mo, meron pang mata, meron pang uh, fingerprint. Tapos meron pang 5 minutes na hintay bago mo mabubuhay sa bukas. Ah, uh, yun yung punto ko. Magandang analogy. Kada kada gamit mo ng sipilyo mo, pupunta ka sa safe mo? Hindi. Nakaredy dapat yan. Nanandyan. Pahanda kasi kagamit ka. E dito, ang laws natin dapat dynamic. Kapag, kapag economics, dapat dynamic. Huwag mo ilalagay sa konstitusyon. Tayo lang ang siraulong naglagay ng ganyan sa loob ng ating saligang patas. Tayo lang. Tayo lang. Kaya pagdating sa UNCTAD rankings, tayo po ang third in the world in terms of restrictiveness against foreign direct investors. In Asia, we are the worst. Uh, uh, East Asia, we are the worst. In Southeast Asia, we are the worst. So, huwag kayong magtataka bakit ang Pilipinas napaka-dependent sa pagpapadala ng mga OFWs iba't ibang bansa. Tapos ang mga OFW natin, ang mga gra graduates, mga ano, may maganda sana kung ano, engineer kanya, nagiging maid, nagiging construction worker lang. Diba? Na, tapos naaabuso pa. Hindi pa ba, ba hindi pa dapat sapat na wake up call yan yung mga pag may kabaong na dumarating dahil na abuso na ano? Di ba? That should, long ago pa dapat, dapat nakita natin yun eh, na hindi magandang situation to yung nagpapadala tayo ng mga ordinaryong Pilipino na maging OFW sa ibang bansa in huge droves when it's better to bring in investors from abroad to come to the Philippines to create jobs. But, ba? May, may, may tanong pa dito. Uh, in reaction to both of you. Ano daw reaction ng speaker, sabi ng isang journalist, 
to the Senate manifesto abandoning the resolution of both houses, RBF6, pag-extend, anong tanong ito? Anong RBF6? And their rejection of PI. Do you consider this a major setback for your long-time advocacy? Uh, tanong ito by uh, journalists watching us by uh, Zoom. Okay, okay. Pag-i-explain namin yung sinasabi niya, RBF6, di pa lang pa. Ano sabi niya? I, I don't know the exact specifics, oh, but sabi as long the Senate, as... Oh, oh, ano reaction niyo to the reaction of the Senate? So, ang akin is, um, it's not going to change anything because the People's Initiative is not dependent upon the the wishes and the caprice, caprices of the Senate. Kahit sabihin nilang gusto nila o hindi, People's Initiative is a People's Initiative. Kung gusto ng mga taong bayan, nakuha natin ang, ang uh, signatures. Sorry, alam ko yun. So, ito yung advocacy mo is not just now because there's Kapal a lot. Kami, oh. So, wala pa si speaker dyan, wala pa dyan. 2010 pa kami, uh, nagsusulong nito. Actually, 2010. 2010. Wow. 2010. So, you've been quoting Professor Alex Pagano pa? Yes, yes. Even before I started the correct movement, I've been reading his articles before. Yes. There was an article that he wrote that uh -oh. uh, he was talking about um, the fact that Singapore and Malaysia would not have ever been able to have prime ministers like Lee Kuan Yew uh, and, uh, and Mathir had we know. had the kind of system that we have. Even Margaret Thatcher would not She would have win in, this kind of, in our system because our system natin is pasikatan. Oh, but oh, in a parliamentary oh. system, people like... Pagalingan. Pagalingan. Yung mga so katulad ni... Win? Yung mga katulad ni Mahathir and, uh, and uh, Lee Kuan Yew na sometimes abrasive, oh, sometimes oh. highly... Parang straight oh, oh. in your face magsalita. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Dito sa Pilipinas, hindi ba na natin? Oo, oh, dito, sing and dance. Song and dance, eh, ano natin. So, magaling si Pope. Sir, so, I, I idol, 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 oh, idol ko yan. Thank you daw, oh, buti. Ay, ano? Pero ano yan? Mas patalino pa yan sa mga politiko natin. Yeah, uh, si Pope, so Alex, back now. <laughs> That's why we have a bad situation yes. in the country today because people like him are not in the politics. <laughs> Kaya baka may tanong si Professor Alex Magno, uh, just in case, baka may tanong na you'd like your 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 disciple, your ano ha, your follower. Potage. <laughs> oh, Potage, your Potage. Ah, may follow up siya. Sige, sige, sige. Pag-i-follow up lang. Ayan din, oh. Ayan naman Potage mo. Gansan na na. Gansan Potage ni Professor Alex Magno yan. <laughs> okay, so I just uh, over the economic side, now the political side. So, okay, we know the problem is uh, Every time the initiatives is blocked, usually their excuse is okay, they often play the moral card. No? But that's a pro another problem. They're not so keen on the parliamentary system. And as you said, they don't like a person, either the one pushing for this or should be have it. They don't want this person to be the head of government simply because they don't like that person. No? So I think that there are other depressions or they're looking at the parliamentary system from, a, from the lens of a presidential system. So they seem to think that a prime minister is like a president. So I think uh, they need to be enlightened why the parliamentary system is different. And it should not be viewed from that same uh, prism. Uh, okay, this much. I'd like to, I don't think it's your standard. So uh, thank you for your interesting question. Oh, is that question? Question? Uh, yeah, that I can shut up. Yeah, ideas. What was your question? Uh, what makes the parliamentary system better than the presidential system? Okay. Because yes. owing to the personality side, why nobody likes parliamentary because uh, they just don't like the person. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. like the person pushing yeah. system. Oh. Okay. So why is the parliamentary system better? Because unlike the presidential system, which is a very personality-oriented system, when when you campaign in a presidential system, particularly when, when you are running for president, you will hear people not say the word we, people who are candidates, they will say I. I plan to do this, I plan to do that. You don't hear them say we because they don't talk about their parties, they talk about themselves. Uh, but in a parliamentary system, it's basically party it's, system. it's a party-based system. And every person is actually not indispensable. Even the leader of the party can be changed next time. So uh, they always talk in a collective collegial way. They say we. We plan to do this. Our party plans to do this. Hindi sila ganyan magsalita na ako, ako, ako. Hindi. And so, there is more of a better party system dynamics. By platform. By platform-based. Nag, nag, 
they, they differentiate each other. Yung mga parties, pag, pag may general election, they will say, mas magaling kami dyan kasi ito ang mga gusto namin gawin. Hindi na uubos ang members ng partido every time. Hindi nangyayari yan. Nangyayari yan dahil meron tayong presidential system na nakaseparate ang president from the executive from the legislature which is a totally separate body. And then we created, in the Philippines, we created the Countrywide Development Fund which later became the PIDAP. We created that as a stopgap measure which to is pre the pork barrel. We created that system to prevent gridlock from happening during the time of Tori Aquino. Because during the time, and daming bangayan ng executive at saka legislative eh. At dahil doon, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga kuku. So they decided, ay, ayusin natin ito. Gawa natin ang legal na paraan para mabili natin ang ang loyalty ng lehislatura. Ayan, meron tayong pera pam, para maakit natin sila on our side, para mag-agree sila sa mga proyekto ng executive. Na-mention yung mga ko. So pag parliamentary tayo, chances of an etsa etsa will be less. Yes, according, so number one, uh, according to the work of Dr. Juan Lins, no? uh, the, the late Dr. Juan Lins, he actually showed that uh, there's more democracy breakdowns in the democratic process in presidential systems than in parliamentary systems. Uh -huh. so in parliamentary systems, there is a mechanism for getting rid of a leader who has lost confidence, who's not doing the right thing, all the time. Okay, hindi na gumagana, sige. Alisin na lang natin siya. But in a presidential system, walang You're ganyan. Stuck. You're, stuck. You're stuck with this person. So ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng impetus, yung outside forces na mag-set up ng coup d'etat. So, or the stabilization. Yes. Yes. That's why you end up having more coup d'etats in presidential systems than in parliamentary systems. Kaya pala ang maraming mga banana republic puro presidential system sa Latin America. Latin America. Ah. Eh, tayo exporter ng banana. Naging <laughs> <laughs> banana republic talaga tayo. Ano. So very interesting. Ang ah, ah, magaling Magaling itong disciple niya, Professor Alex Mando. Maraming natutunan pa niyo, Colum. Hindi, marami siyang research. Baka may tanong or comments si Professor Alex Mando, just in case. <laughs> Any questions or not? A fan ninyo, ito, brilliant for sa ito, eh, nanalo sa Battle of the Brains. Kaya kung binib siya sa inyo, matalino kayo. <laughs> Oh, okay. Benjamin, bakit? Bakit na lalalong pa? Ah, wow. 1998 pa, oh. 1998 pa, in fairness. Wow. So, uh, wow. So, ano reason? Ba't puro na pa black? Itong good ideas. Ah, Catholic Church. Ah, yun ang takot nila, divorce law. Oh, by the way, we are the only country in the world na walang divorce law. Even Italy, mayroon. Grabe. Ang galing. Wow. So, ano reaction? Anong... Any comment or any question you'd like to give a uh, Professor Alex Pagno? Yes. Yes. I hear they all. One political party, yes. I hear that God. Wow, nakinig ba? Both buying will be very expensive na, money politics na. Yes. Yes. Tama, tama. Kaya na bawihin. Wow, galing ng analysis. So tama, there's a big problem. I mean, 
That's what will happen. Yes. Kung hindi natin baguhin yung sistema, yun talaga yung trajectory natin. Yeah, yun yung trajectory natin. So, wow. Thank you, Professor. Ang galing. Hey, we need to break the cycle. Yes, yes, so, yes. Now, one one way to break the cycle of the, the move towards money politics is firstly, let's create an environment where people will no longer be mendicants always asking for money. And that happens because ang daming tao walang trabaho. Ayuda lang ang laging hinihingi. Diba? So, why not have a system na ang daming trabaho para sa mga tao? Yun nga yung, yun yung rason bakit kinakailangan natin i-allow yung mga foreign investors na pumasok. Mag-rate ng jobs Dadami ang mga taong may pera, mata okay yung sweldo nila, it will change their attitudes, it will change their behavior. Yung mga taong dating hingi ng hingi, nagkaroon sila ng sweldo, nagkaroon sila ng higher self-esteem, maiinsulto pa sila pag inabutan mo ng pera. Ano mo tinatingin mo sa akin? Walang ulubi? Thank you, Professor Magno. Very uh, thought-provoking ang comments niya and your response. Galing ha? So... Mga matatalino in favor of changing. Uh, anong tanong nila sa record? Pag-introduce yourself. Hindi pinasa uh, ngayon. Yes. Sir, uh, sa nangyayari ko ngayon kay Boss Richard, ay parang may chance ako. Ano yung nakikita ko? Ano nakikita nyo? May chance and anong timetable yes. uh, based on your observation? Um, and I, your studies. To be honest, I, I don't know so much about the timetable per se. I just know that the People's Initiative has triggered the Senate to be forced to be a bit more cooperative towards constitutional reform. Kasi kung maalala natin, last year, si Senator Mick Zubiri, eh, kumukontra. Parang, ay, di naman natin kailangan yan. Di naman importante. Kung baga siya. So, ngayon, Dahil dun sa pag-emerge ng People's Initiative, parang napwersa silang magsabi ng, hindi, 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 sige, change din namin, sige. We will, uh, we will push for changing the economic restrictions. Tapos, they want to be part of it. Yeah, they want to be part of it. So, medyo at least nag-change yung kanilang attitude. Parang naudyok sila, na-entice sila, or rather na-force sila na maging more cooperative. Otherwise, Kung hindi nila gagawin yan, mawawalan talaga sila ng boses pag na, natuloy ang, ang people's initiative. Based on your uh, readings, reports, and the reading, uh, is it on the way? Kasi is it on the way already? Kasi maraming news about it. Is it already happening? I, well, if you're talking about the people's initiative, yes, yes it is uh, It's underway. Lumalabas na. They, they were able to get the, the required number of uh, both, uh, sorry, signatures so it looks like it's it's on its way. For and people like us who are not aware of the details and hindi na pag-aralan to, yung mechanics ng people's initiative, what should be the steps for them to do it in order to make it ano, uh, ano, constitutional reform? Anong next step nila? Well, I what will they do with the signatures? Ng, ano, eh, magkakaroon ng verification of signatures step by the, by the COMELEC. Ah, and then pag natapos yan, what will happen? After after that happens, oh, I don't really know the exact the legal details. yes that, that. That, um, I think there's going to be a formal petition. Uh, I I don't I'm, I'm sorry but I don't know yes. the exact um, more or um, less um, we will be um, walang kinalaman ang legislatura. Ah uh, so ang mangyayari will they convert the Congress and the Senate into a concord niya ba yan or uh, will they elect another set next no, no, year no, no, no. they elect shot the, the people's initiative the, people's, happen, the yeah. people's initiative does not have anything to do with con, uh, constituent assembly or constitutional convention so it's iba only, yan. Iba po yan, iba po yan. all that this particular people's yes. initiative is saying is kung maipasa natin to kung napasa na, uh, oh, with the, uh, we will have yeah signatures. with a required number of signatures then ang gusto nating mangyari is mabago yung yung clause na ito na nagsasabi na ah, um, pwede na nila gawin the lower house, upper house? Or? Not yet, oh. not yet. Kasi kinakailangan pa na magkaroon ng plebisito. So on, may plebisito. On what topic? On what topic? On that, on that text. The text, the ah, change of the text. The proposed. the proposed text is, we will we will replace yung nakasulat doon sa Article 17. Yes. Na sinasabing three-fourths vote of Congress. No, uh, the Congress with a three-fourths vote shall convene. Pagayan. Yes. Uh, parang... 
uh, shall vote on amendments. Na. Parang it's a change nila yon para mag change yung text that both houses of Congress voting jointly with a three fourths vote. Blah, blah, blah. Yun yung gusto nilang gawin para maging maging joint sila. Ngayon, ang point ko, bago mga mangyari yan, kinakailangan muna ng plebisito. So, magkukol ng election ang COMELEC para lahat ng mga botante ay pupunta sa mga voting booths at mag yes versus no na boto kung saan ayon ba kayo do doon sa text na yun. So, may chance pa na yung mga ayaw na makapagkampanya kayo during sa, the vote. Before the vote. Before the vote. Kung baga magkakaroon ng Uh, announcement. There's going, there's going to be an announcement that we will have a plebiscite yes yeah. versus no. So uh, yung mga yes, sasabihin natin, we want this because blah blah blah. blah. Yung mga ayaw, o kayo, magkampanya rin kayo. So may chance kayo na makumbinsin ninyo yung mga taong bayan na hindi bumoto para doon sa yes. Bumoto sila sa no. Kung talagang ayaw ng mga tao. Pero mga tao, lalo na mga galing sa OFW backgrounds, marami siya gusto na ng pagbabago eh. Ako, tagal na akong OFW talaga ng pagbabago. Kasi pagod na ako na napag-iiwanan ng Pilipinas They, year in, year out. Okay, mahalo ka pa siya. Thank you. Okay. Ano po yung point of opinion niyo, sir, doon sa ginagawang paghandag ng Senate? Pag po ba, ang charter change po ba pag uh, nabago or approve po ba? Magkakaroon, mawawawasan ng power yung Ah, uh, mawawawasan ng power o mawawala sila? Okay, uh, which particular reform are you talking about na mababawasan sila ng power? Yung People's Initiative? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, if we're talking about the People's Initiative, yes. sa People's Initiative, pag nangyari yun at naboto ng yes, nanalo yung yes sa majority, yes. for the what do you call this, for the reforms requiring uh, constituent assembly, yes magdadilute yung votes ng Senate. Pero sa lahat ng ibang bagay, as per normal pa rin. As per normal pa rin. Doon lamang sa pag pagbabago ng konstitusyon, wala sila mawawalan sila ng say. ng say. Pero yun nga yung sinasabi natin. May may kakayahan din sila na magsabi, hindi hindi hindi. Let's go with the constitu constitutional convention na lang. So pwede sila magkampanya before that. They can, they can. They can. Hindi naman hindi naman porket may people's initiative oh wala na kayo ng ano ng saysay ng uh, ng power magkakaroon pa rin ng plebisito. Ang plebisito, yun yung final say. Pag nanalo ang yes, doon lang mangyayari yon. Pag nanalo yung no, eh di wala nang nangyari. Lahat ng mga modes of changing the constitution, be it people's initiative, constituent assembly or constitutional convention, lahat yan kinakailangan ng plebisito. So wag po kayo na papadala sa fake news na ay pag ginawa nila yan mawawala na tao. No. The people still have the final say. Ang mga botante may kakayahang mag-veto ng anumang mga panukalang reforma sa konstitusyon. May abilidad tayo na magsabi ay ayaw namin yan. No. Pwede. Sorry may nagtanong dito nanonood by a Facebook Live. Uh, may nagtatanong si Jeremy pangalan niya. Your opinion on full ownership daw ng mga layuhan sa uh, constitution, di kaya manganib ang mga agricultural lands natin kapag layuhan na ang nagmamayari ng mga to, mailagay pa sa alanganin ang food security pot natin. Jeremy, may tanong siya. Okay, magandang question yan. Unang-una, yes. madalas nangyayari pag pinag-uusapan yung allowing foreign direct investors to come into the Philippines laging kinoconfuse ng mga taong kontra sa reforma na sasabihin nila, ay, yung lupa, 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 ay eh, maapektuhan, apektuhan, apektuhan, eh, hindi naman natin pinag-uusapan ng lupa, ang pinag-uusapan natin ay negosyo. Iba po ang negosyo sa lupa. Hindi po pareho ang lupa at negosyo. Pag sinabi natin, we want foreign investors to come in and set up businesses, hindi naman, iba, hindi naman pareho yan sa we want them to come here and own land pagkaibang usapan po yan. So, may, be sure to separate the two, in, the, the two situations. Owning businesses is different from owning land. Ngayon, even if, even if we, we allow land ownership by foreigners, we can always create safeguard, safeguarding legislation that will prevent 
ownership of land by undesirable people. We can also set up limits to how big their land, uh, their land acquisitions can be. We can learn from countries like Malaysia who do allow foreign invest foreigners to own land. However, meron silang special safeguards sa Malaysia. Meron silang different types of land na kinakategorize. Meron silang reserved for Malays and, and indigenous people only. Ganyan. Meron silang land na ganyan. And then other land na pwede. So yung mga foreigner, hindi pwede maging may-ari ng lupad na considered own, uh, only reserved for Malays and indigenous people. Even Vietnam and China. May mga they have that too, yes. Uh, Doon sa Malaysia, they, they do allow foreigners to own land. Those land that is allowed to be owned by foreigners, hindi pwede maging may-ari, hindi pwede bumili ng lupa na less than 1 million ringgit. Dito sa Pilipinas, kung mag-allow tayo ng foreign ownership of land, pwede tayong gumawa ng special law na sinasabi. Pwede kang, as a foreigner, you can own land kung ang asawa mo ay Pilipina. Number one, we can do that. Tapos ito ang size na pwede, may size. Anything bigger than that, sorry, hindi pwede. pwede. We can do that also na foreigner ka, tapos yung anak mo ay Pilipino citizen. So meron kang anak, siguro na biudo, kasi yung Pilipinang babae siguro na wala na. Pero may anak siya na Pilipino, pwede. We can make laws like that. We can also make laws flexible. that say, we can, make, we can be flexible and create legislation that will safeguard the rights of Filipinos para hindi kahit sinong Tom, Dick, and Harry dyan na foreigner ay magiging may-ari na maraming lupain. Pwede tayong gumawa ng limits. Pwede tayong magsabi hanggang residential area lang na um, uh, size of a mansion. Yun lang. Hindi pwedeng asyenda. Hindi pwede. Pwede tayong gumawa ng ganyang klaseng batas. Hindi porket mag-aalaw tayo ng land eh ay, ang buong Pilipinas ang magiging pagmamayari ng mga dayuan. Hindi po nangyayari yan. Pwede tayong gumawa ng safeguards. May tanong pa dito, sorry. Uh, may nagtanong dito ano, na about uh, should that constitutional change be wholesale or piecemeal? Anong opinion mo daw? Isa isa bang maliliit o buong constitution ng big change? If you ask me, uh, I would prefer a total overhaul of the. Uh, that's what I. That's my preference. A okay. total overhaul of the 1987 constitution because it is kung baka kung, kung sa programming pa yan ng operating system. It's very buggy. It's very buggy. Ang daming bugs. Yung know, makiklik ka din hindi gumana. O yung click ka dito naghang. Ganyan. Iyan ang iyari sa total upgrade. Total replacement. Place. Kasi minadali nga eh. Mali yung pagkagawa. Bakit din ang madali for us? Well, uh, Tita Cory did not want to be in this uh, revolutionary government situation for a long time. So, pinilit, sinabihan niya na, hoy, uh, bilisan niyo para hindi tayo na maakusa na nandito tayo sa parang dictatorial style. So, bilisan niyo. Eh, dun sa pagmamadali, itong Yung, yung ano, uh, yung tawag nito, yung um, Article 17, hindi na-upgrade. Alam niyo ba yung kwento? Bakit nagka-problema yung Article 17? Ano yung Article 17? Article 17 is the part which talks about how to amend the Constitution. Oh. Ang Article 17, nakasulat doon ay uh, Congress. Hindi niya sinasabing both houses of Congress. It only uh, says Congress. As if Congress is a, is a single entity. Okay? Bakit? Kasi nung ginawa yung original draft ng 1987 Constitution, originally gusto nila ng unicameral or uh, unicameral legislature. Ah, hindi yung dalawa. Hindi okay. dalawa. Gusto nila talaga originally isa lang. Kamara lang. Tapos at the last minute, may isang nagsabi, hindi, mas maganda yata, meron tayong Senado. So, gawa tayo ng Senado. Tapos at the last minute, nagmadali sila na in you know in update nila yung mga clauses on structure pero nakalimutan nilang baguhin yung clauses ng article 17 kaya yung ambiguity ng article 17 and then pa rin so nakasulat din congress may with a three fourths vote hindi sinabi both houses of congress if you compare the US constitution it says both houses of congress but if you look at the Philippine constitution of 1987 hey. it only says Congress. So, as if, ano, ah, isa lang house yan? Ganun. May appeal ka ba to the senators now what they should be reacting or doing to these people's initiative? 
Thank you, Diyos. May nagtatambita. Mga mahal na senador, parang awa niyo na sa aming mga OFW, sa aming mga ordinaryong Pilipino. Baguhin na po natin ang saligang batas. Please, huwag po kayong huma humarang. Huwag po kayong maging sagabal sa pagbabago at pag-update at pag-upgrade or pag-replace ng palpak na sistema natin kasi kita naman po natin ang resulta ng Pilipinas dahil sa sistema natin palpak, baguhin na po natin please lang, coming from an OFW IT professional na galing sa Singapore yun po may, may nagtanong pa dito sorry. may nagtanong pa dito what is your reading of the President Bongbong Marcos stance on this issue hindi pa siya masyadong bongkal about this ano? oh, may, lang. Well, so, may well, comment pa siya know? will he have a role My role, but he does not have a role to play, but I hear, I, I know that there was a recent um, statement made where he said, kailangan na natin baguhin at least man lang yung economic restrictions tanggalin or at least man lang isoften or ilusen. So I think that's a good sign. Um, it's a good sign that, you know, magkakaroon ng pagbabago dito kasi it looks like the president himself now thinks na, I think time it's now time to fix it. Yes, ma'am. Ayos. Yes. Yung 12%, eh, pag nababod doon sa 12%, automatic kayo. Yun, automatic na yun. So, kayo, titingnan kung ano ano ba to? Totoo ba to? Baka pinorch lang? Ano ba to? Ay, i-verify. I-verify yung mga signatures. May nagtanong dito, sorry, may nagtanong dito sa media. Naalala daw niya, noong panahon ni Noy Noy Aquino as president daw, Si Senate President Juan Ponce Enrique was for charter change of the provisions. Even the President of the Liberal Party, yes. uh, Speaker Sani Belmonte, Belmonte yes. uh, told me personally he, he was for it. What and, happened? And they both, they both. What happened? The Senate President Enrile at the time and, and Speaker, Speaker Belmonte. Belmonte both went to Time Street to visit him personally. What happened? Well, he doesn't want to change his mommy's I constitution. Emotional attachment. Emotional attachment. Emotional attachment. But what is the deep, uh, logical? No uh, logic whatsoever. Just emotional attachment. That's unfortunate. How was he able to stop the two of them powerful? We have a, we have a political system that's too strong on the president. Is it correct? Yes. Abnormally strong on president. Abnormally strong. The, the president has the ability to use the purse strings. Basically to say, well, I can withdraw your funding, you know, if you don't, if this is what I want, so you can withdraw funding from who's wrong the president. We have a hybrid presidentialist system in the Philippines. Na parang sultan. Absolute parang monarch. Parang, like parang an absolute, monarch. Yeah, like an absolute so monarch. So strong na imbalance. Uh, so, totoo yan, the two of them went there, they, they want went, charter change. Pumunta sila sa, sa Time Street nung isang Sunday. Ah, tapos ano nangyari? Tapos ano nangyari? Tapos ano nangyari? Ang lumabas, hindi nila na sinabi kung ano talaga yung pinag-usapan, pero oh, yeah, we understand this position, parang lumabas sila. That's all. Kitang-kita oh, na ayaw talaga ng... So uh, even the most intelligent politician at that time, kahit na ano sabihin nila, they were for it. Or, I mean, Second most... President, you know. People who've gone through, you know, a lot of history will history. say talagang walang kwenta ang sistema eh. Ito, ito, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, ito, no, pwede tayo. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have two questions for you. Una, uh, do you think constitution reform is necessary to make it on the uh, instead of uh, revising yung ilang mga laws natin, uh, particularly the Retail Trade Organization Act uh, for Investment Act and Public Service, which is, doon po diba, naka-indicate yung ilang percent lang yung maaari uh, ariin ng mga foreign. So do you think uh, reform is Revising legislation is not enough because the constitution is very loud in sending a signal to the international community that we don't want foreign investors to come in. It's it's like it's like this eh. Parang may sarili kang meron kang restaurant. Tapos sinasabi mo, oy mga tao, puta kayo dito sa amin, puta kayo dito, we want you. Tapos may malaking sign na nakasabi. May malaking sign ha. Sa labas, bawal ang hindi ka mag-anak pumasok. So, parang nagsasabi ka, parang, ano ba, mixed signals, nagsasabi ka, punta kayo dito sa amin, punta kayo dito sa restaurant namin, pero may malaking sign na nakasulat, bawal kayo pumasok. Ano sasabihin ng mga 
taong gusto pumasok na nakita nila bawal ang ano kung hindi ka pa, parang ano pa talaga gusto mo? Gusto mo kami pumasok o hindi? So kinakailangan mong tanggalin yung signage na yan na nagsasabing ayaw namin sa inyo. So ang constitution po mas mataas kaysa sa legislation. Kahit gumawa tayo ng anong mga pasikot-sikot o anong mga circumvention, hindi po gagana yan. Dahil ang constitution natin ay nagsasabi na ayaw namin sa mga foreign investor. So it's a signal eh. It's a it's, it's really a, a, an evil signal that tells people na we, we don't want you. Kaya yan, we have one of the lowest uh, kung baga low yung uh, pagpasok ng foreign investors. Yung, yung foreign Every investor on after the hour. Oh. So, so inflows natin mababa. So maganda ang kwento mo na because low foreign investors in the Philippines due to all these restrictions uh, yung mga public na sa ibang bansa so our best people like you na pupunta sa ibang bansa to work instead of enriching the Philippines. Yes, yes. Al alala ko ha, ang dami kong mga nakikilalang mga puti dun sa sa ano, sa sa Singapore, no? Um, nakakausap nila ako kasi meron akong sideline dati sa Singapore na nag-host post ako, nag-ano ako, stand-up comedy, ganyan, tapos nagugustuhan nila yung mga Nagugusto nila yung ano yung ginagawa ko sa ako. Hindi pagbaba ako sa stage, lalapitan ako ng mga puti kasi nalalaman nako. Binibigay niya ako, binibigay nila ako ng card. Mga director, mga matataas na rango sa mga multinational companies. Tapos ganyan sila, oh, hey, uh, 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 Roy, you know, we really like you. We, we love Filipinos. You guys are really the best, you know. We we love to actually um we love to uh, in, invest in the Philippines, but the problem is your laws, your constitution doesn't allow us to, it, it discourages us from coming in. Paulit-ulit ko naririnig yan eh. Ever since nasa Singapore ako, naririnig ko yan sa mga puti, sa mga gustong-gusto nila sa mga Pilipino. Magaling tayo mag-English, marunong. You know, we, we're good, we're hard workers. Marami sa atin may engineering degrees at sa kung ano, ano pa mga advanced degrees and all that. We're hard workers, we're, we're, we're fast learners. Tapos, ano tayo, um, very flexible. We, we can think outside of the box. Pero, ano nangyari? Napipwersa sila na mag-set up ng kanila mga pabrika, ng office nila sa Singapore, at mga pabrika nila sa Thailand, sa Malaysia, sa Vietnam. Tapos, kasi gusto talaga nila ng Pilipino, nag-hire sila ng mga bisor at mga manager na galing sa Pilipinas na nagiging OFW. Yan ang nangyari. Na either malayo sa pamilya o paminsan, talagang gusto nila, kukunin nila, yung buong pamilya gagawing expat doon sa Vietnam or sa Malaysia. And anong nangyayari? Itong buong pamilya na ito na pumunta, itong Pilipinong family na pumunta ng Malaysia o ng Vietnam as expats, hindi na nagbabayad ng buwis. Hindi na nagre-remit. Bakit sila magre-remit? Yung buong pamilya na na, nasa labas ng bansa. Nag nagtatrabaho sila sa Vietnam, nagbabayad sila ng tax sa Vietnam. O, hindi nakikinabang ang Pilipinas. Pero kung in instead of sending Filipinos abroad, pumunta sila sa Pilipinas, yung mga taong empleyado ng mga multinational na to, eh magbabayad sila ng buwis. Ang mga multinational companies niya, magbabayad din ng buwis. Kadami ang pera. Kailangan ng pera ng mga Pilipinas. May balong person yata siya. Yes. Next question. Uh, in terms of security, uh, speaking niyo po, this will still prevent yung uh, ating security base knowing na kung maaabuhan natin kung para revise or ma-amend yung constitution economic provisions constitution uh, knowing na 100% hindi hindi po ba sa tingin niyo ay mas malaki yung security risk ng Pilipinas since uh, may mga issues tayo with uh, NGCP uh, illegal foreign businesses so so one of the things we need to first look at is number one no other country puts restrictions against ownership of, of businesses by foreigners in the constitution. Tayo lang. Oh, we're, the only country. we're the only country that does that. And we're actually supposed to just do what everybody else does, which is set up your regulations, set up your businesses, uh, your, so, so set up your restrictions in legislation. So dapat sa legislation natin ginagawa, yung mga detalyado, bawal ang ganito, um, the, the state is required to look into look into the operations of Ganyan and the ownership structure of this to see if there are any undue foreign influences. You can make you can make statutory legislation to take care of that. Hindi dapat sa constitution ninalagay yan. Yun lang po. 
Thank you very much. Um, we don't have time for a lot of other questions. Can we send an amount of money? Sing it, sing it. I'm si, uh, galing pa sa Makati. Uh, um, very good journalist from Business Mirror. Kilala mo sa Lili Bolle? Please, Raul Reyes. Yes, sir. You guarantee, uh, what, what's the assurance of going parliamentary in preventing Pat and Lin dynasties? Okay. Yes. Um, if we have a parliamentary system, number one, the right way to have a parliamentary system is you don't have term limits, right? Ah, uh, the new or the yeah. Answer. yeah, matagal sila in, in kasi magaling sila, so pwede silang tumagal. Now, there is research by Dr. Pablo Kerubin, who's a Colombian um, academic based in the U.S. Um, he made research about the Philippines and that Dahil sa pag-introduce natin ng term limits, eh lumala ang ating mga dynasties. Ang kanyang research, no, lumalabas na dati sa old constitution ng 1935, nung kaya everybody, from congressman, senator, etc., pwede mag-run mag for re-election. Normally, isang tao lang sa isang pamilya ang nagiging politiko. Isa lang. So yung tatay lang. Tapos uh -oh. mga anak, nagiging businessman, nagiging ano, whatever else, academic. Ganyan. Tapos, pag nag-retire pag nag siya, sometimes walang pumapalit. Or uh -huh. kung meron pumalit, sige, pumalit after siya nag-retire. So naging thin dynasty. If uh -huh. ever, naging. But when we introduced the 1987 constitution and started to have term limits, naging clan na. Doon nagkataon na after three terms or nine years, Mrs. Anak, oh, yung may, isang mayor ka ng isang city, magaling ka, gusto ka ng mga tao, marami kang mga projects na gusto gawin, at marami kang projects na hindi pa natatapos, pero hindi ka na pwede mag dahil at term limit ka na. Sasabihin mo, ah, anak, mag ka. Tatay, wala naman akong alam sa politika. Ay, nene, mag ka, ako yung magiging bise mo. Magkaroon ka as mayor, ako magiging busy, magsabay tayo, tutulungan kita, anak. So, immediately after nine years, nagkaroon ng dalawang tao from the same family na nasa loob, sa loob ng isang munisipyo, sa isang municipality or ng isang city. Sabay sila, patdaya na sila yun. And then another 18 years, nagkaroon ng pangatlong tao, nag-a-add ng nag-a-add. Yun so, yung nangyayari. It worsens. Uh, it worsens. So before, there were no dynasties. Sometimes there were no dynasties and they became thin dynasties. Those dynasties that were thin became fat dynasties. So talagang naging worse. Naging worse ang situation ng dynasty sa Pilipinas. Yes. Uh, what model? What countries? I, I actually particularly like the UK model. I like the UK model. I also like the, the, the German model. Um, sa nakikita ko, ang naging, ang bansa na parang mixture between British and German is actually New Zealand. So New Zealand, maganda yung sistema uh, nila. Maganda yung sistema ng New Zealand. Uh, so, we can learn a lot from how New Zealand does what they do because they have a, uh, a system that is very much the, the UK system. Kasi maganda sa UK system, nakikita mo talaga Ginigisa, ginigisa talaga yung Prime Minister na, ng mga tao galing sa oposisyon. Tinatanong nila, bakit nagkaroon ng ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos, imagine mo, parang Presidente ng Republika, tinatanong ng mga maraming mahihirap na kwestiyon. Kaya, hindi pwedeng tatangatanga, hindi pwedeng bodo. Oo, hindi pwedeng natago. Oh, have to be good. Ay, si Professor. Microphone, microphone kay Professor Alex Marklaw. Jaja party na o nga? Ah, wow. What will what will make it evaporate? Yes. Yes. Ah. Oh. I don't know go long. Uh -uh. 
Uh, so it's him now who will break or unbreak it. Oh, wow. What? Wow. Ah. So there's a danger it might end up like the other two attempts. What is your reaction and recommendation? Magaling na sinabi ni Professor, di ko alam niya na. Ako, hindi ko rin alam yan. Yes, so what is lang, your recommendation? Ang akin lang, sana talaga patuloy pa rin. And this is like our last chance. Kasi kung, I mean, honestly, honestly speaking, as an OFW, long time OFW, there's no, there's no place like home. Kahit nandun ka sa labas ng bansa, na maganda ang, maganda ang uh, tinitirahan mong bansa, Hindi ka talaga welcome sa totoo lang. Hindi, hindi mo naman talaga tahanan yan. Hindi mo naman talaga home yan. Eh. Pilipinas yes, naman talaga ang home natin, mga Pilipinas. So, kailangan natin ayusin. Sana lahat ng ating mga leaders from all sides, from all parts, dapat baguhin na natin yung sistema. Sana so, ang message po kay President Bongbong Mark, ang sabi ni Professor Alex Magdo, essentially oh, now it's, it's on her lap. Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's na. Senator King Solomon, siya yung can make or unmake this charter change. Anong appeal mo kay President Bongbong Marcos? So, suggestion mo? So, Mr. President, sana po um, gawin po natin ito. Let's go through with this process. This is the much needed change that we've all been wanting to have that most people didn't know about in the 1990s and the, in the early 2000s. But now more people know, especially OFWs and overseas Filipinos, yung mga nag-migrate sa ibang bansa, alam na nila na kailangan baguhin ang sistema. So please, let's let's make it happen para makapag-uwi na rin ang maraming OFWs kapag gumanda ang mga resulta dahil sa mga reforma ito. Kailangan ito because I remember older videos where the president himself was saying that he is pro-reform. I remember a lot of these videos. Gusto niya ng open to foreign investors. Alala ko dati, sinabi oh, niya, 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 gusto niya ng federalism, na rin, he's part of the federalism, the pro-federalism party, di ba? Ah, o nga, party niya, party of the federal ng Pilipinas, di ba, TFP. So, dapat magkaroon ng mga ganitong klaseng mga, at least man lang, yung gradual shift, kung hindi natin magawa yung shift, at least man lang, papunta tayo doon. Let's make it happen. Let's not, let's not wait for another, I don't know what, how many more years bago mangyari. Forever na lang ba tayo mananatiling banana republic? Ayusin na natin ito. Baka mahungusan pa tayo ng Cambodia at saka Myanmar eh. Diba? Nahungusan nga na nga tayo ng Vietnam eh. Nagpaplanta sila ng huge plantation ng banana. Walang bido. Oo. Oh. Ah. 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 A class big one swing boat. Ah. Wow. Sa yung, yung, yung one vote na yun. Na nagkagulo-gulo politika natin. Wow. Daming alam galing ha. Ah. Ah, that's a reason. That's a uh, contingent. There are no concerns at that time. In the long term, bigger picture. 
പിന്നെ ഇന്ട്രോ ലങ് മറാമി സിനാബെ binatikos ng sistema natin binatikos na ang 1987 constitution natin sinabi niya isa sa mga problema natin sa Pilipinas ay gumagamit tayo ng uh, separation of powers na presidential system according to the parang US style and he says it's a very difficult system to operate sinabi pa niya kami pa kami pa ang mga Asian tigers na yumaman na dating mahirap Magiging ganito pa kaming mayamang bansa kung gumagamit kami ng sistema na meron kayo. Uh, hindi namin magagawa yan dahil mahirap yung sistema gamit yung, yung American style system na yan. Which in turn actually Mexican pala. Yung Mexican pala. <laughs> Mexican pala. Thank you. Thank you Professor Alex Magno for your great you. inputs and analysis and historical perspective. Uh, we have time for one more last question. and then we will serve nice lunch for everyone uh, you can still ask questions kay i mean a lot of ask questions yes one or two last questions yes. only three regions are capable of uh, capable of going being a federal state uh, can you get uh, yes okay so okay Uh, there are only three regions in the Philippines that are rich enough to uh, sustain themselves. That's NCR, um, so, uh, Region 4, basically southern, yung, ano, yung, yung, just, just south of it, yung nandyan yung Cavite, Batangas, and then Central Luzon. Only these three. In reality, it's very clear what's going on. It's really all because of the current unitary system that we have. Everything is centered around Metro Manila, okay? And then those two regions are actually spillover regions, spillover ng economic activity ng Metro Manila. Kaya kaya tayo may yung region for yung ano yung yung southern yung Calabarzon pa lang, Calabarzon. Kaya sila mayaman. At kaya yung Central Luzon ay mayaman din. Eh dahil sa dito yung mga Sobrang mahina ng lupa sa ano eh ng mga lupa sa yeah. Metro Manila. Sige, doon na lang tayo sa Bulacan mag-set up sa Maykawayan ayan or or doon na tayo sa May Cavite or sa Laguna mag-set up. So, spill over po yan yung mga yan ng Metro Manila. Huwag nating sabihin na hindi tayo magfe-federal dahil ganyan lang ang nangyari. Kaya nga tayo magfe-federal para mabago na yung situation na hindi lang yung tatlong yan. Ah. Um, Uh, ang, ang mayaman. So, pag nagkaroon tayo ng transition, hindi ibig sabihin na automatically magiging self-sufficient yung mga yan. Hindi. Teka lang. Ito, ako yung nag-invento nitong analogy na to na ginagamit ni Senator uh, Robin Padilla sa kanya mga interviews. Uh, I made an analogy where ang federalism, para yung pamilya. Pag may federal, may federal government, yung national government, para yung mga magulang, tapos yung mga regions, ay eh, parang mga anak. Eh kung sa pamilya, hindi naman lahat ng mga anak ay eh, pareho ng edad. Di ba? Mayroon kang mga anak siguro na, lalo na sa mga big families na mga 10, 10 kids. Di ba? Mayroon iba na eh, nakapagtapos na ng college. May iba na, kolehyo pa, may iba, high school pa, may iba, grade school pa. Yung mga bata pa na, yung mga bata pang anak, syempre, tinutulungan ng, binibigyan ng allowance yan. Ginagabayan ng mga magulang yan. Yung mga nagtapos na ng kolehiyo at naga, nagtatrabaho na, eh pwede na kayong on your own. So ganun din ang mga regions. Yung mga mayaman na regions, okay, you're medyo autonomous ka na. Ngayon yung mga hindi pa masyadong well-developed, eh tinutulungan pa rin. Tinutulungan para eventually maging self-sufficient din sila. Yun dapat ang ginagawa sa federalism. Yung tinatawag natin gradual evolving federalism. Yun po yung sinusulong namin. Hindi na, wala kami sinasabing Pagkakaroon tayo ng, pag nag-federal tayo, diretso lahat magiging self-sufficient. Hindi naman ganun. 
pagkakaroon ng proseso yan, baka lang ng mga regions ay mayaman. Tingnan nyo po ang mga uh, Canada. Hindi naman Canada or Australia. Hindi naman lahat ng mga state lahat ng mga sub-national Australia ay mga state. Meron ding mga territory like the Northern Territory in Australia which is relatively poor and sparsely populated. Hindi sila state kasi wala pa masyadong tao doon. Ganon din yung mga sa USA. Sa USA, hindi lahat dati ay naging state. Ang, Mex ang uh, sorry, Alaska, Alaska at saka Hawaii, 1959 lang yata sila naging state kasi before that they were territories dahil hindi pa sila self-sufficient. So, may chance din yan. Ibig sabihin, if we don't start now, eh, forever ganyan. Forever ganyan. Lagi lang Metro Manila. So, kaya yung aratik na ano. So, kaganda rin ako, Jake Paul, in answer to the observation. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, ah, may question din daw. Uh, microphone, please. Yes. Pag-iabot. Uh, kung, kung may dalawa, tatlo, okay pa. Yes, pwede pa. Yes, yes. I-exhaust na natin ito. Yes, Maralat yes. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Saka pwede ka mag-start ng soap ang maya habang nag- Yes. 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 Uh, baka daw hindi na, may, may end up na hindi na tayo may ari ng Pilipinas. Uh, so, that's my first question. So, what can you say about that? And then, that's, the next question is, pagdating po sa federalism, there are also fears na, kasi di ba, pag federalism po, yung national government, hindi na sila ang magsusupply ng pondo sa mga NGOs. So you're entirely on your own to produce your own Okay, farm. I just answered that earlier. Just I already gave an answer to that. I said, parang pamilya po yan. Yung mga LGU na hindi pa masyado mayaman ay tutulungan it, mag, na mag-transition para maging mas mayaman, maging self-sufficient. So nasagot ko na po yan yung sa part ng federalism. Hindi po ibig sabihin na pag nag-shift to federalism tayo agad-agad ay you're on your own. Hindi po. Gaya ng sinabi ko, parang pamilya yan. Yung mga anak na hindi pa tapos sa pagpo, sa kolehiyo, ay eh binibigyan pa rin ng abo ng ano ng uh, ng tulong, binibigyan ng allowance at uh, ginagabayan ng mga magulang. Kap sa kana kapag natapos ka na sa kolehiyo at may trabaho na, diyan ka na mag magiging medyo autonomous na. Pero yun po, nasagot kakasagot ko lang po nung tanong niyo on federalism. So ngayon, doon tayo sa lands. Nasagot ko rin po yun actually kanina. So yung question diyan, pag Sinabi ko doon kanina na kinakailangan natin i-separate yung issue ng foreign ownership of businesses versus foreign ownership of lands dahil hindi po sila magkapareho. Ngayon, pag ang main main thrust natin ngayon is owning is foreigners or foreign companies being able to own businesses in the Philippines without restrictions sana, without constitutional restrictions. Ngayon, doon sa question ng land, pag kahit inalaw in natin na maging may-ari ng lupa ang mga foreigners, hindi po ibig sabihin na automatically lahat ng mga lupa ay pag, pag magiging may-ari ng, ng foreigners. Kasi pwede po tayong gumawa ng legislation na magsa-safeguard tulad ng magsa-safeguard sa rights ng mga Pilipino. Una-una, gayahin natin ang Malaysia or pag-aralan natin anong ginagawa ng Malaysia. Sa Malaysia, nasabi ko na ito kanina, Meron po silang categories ng land. Meron silang land na reserved only for the indigenous people and Malays. So hindi po hindi pwedeng maging may-ari ng ganyang klaseng lupa ang mga foreigner. Tapos dun sa mga permitted lands na pwedeng bilhin ng foreigner, meron po silang um, minimum amount na kinakailangan bayaran. Anything lower than 1 million ringgit, hindi pwedeng bumili ang foreigner. So meron ganyang klaseng mga restrictions. Tayo sa Pilipinas, pwede tayong gumawa ng mga special restrictions that will safeguard against yung pagmamayari ng sobrang daming lupa ng mga foreigners. Pwede tayong magsabi, ang ordinary foreigner, hindi hindi automatically pwede maging mayari ng lupa. Kinakailangan ay kung gusto mong bumili ng lupa, pwede kang mag, 
pwedeng bu- 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 bumili ka kung may bahay lang, isang ganito kalaki lang, no? L- yung lote ng lupa lang. Or public lang. Diba? Or, or, or condo lang. Ngayon, siguro, kung ikaw ay foreigner, nag- magse-set up ka ng business na magkikreate ng at least X number of jobs for Filipino citizens, o oh, pwede kang magset, pwede kang bumili ng lupa na malaki-laki. Dahil hindi hasenda. Tapos hindi naman pwede hasenda. Siguro, laki ng pabrika lang. Ganun. So we can make special arrangements. We can also say, ang foreigner na may asawang Pilipina pwede maging may-ari ng lote. Ang foreigner na may Filipino citizen na anak pwede maging may-ari ng lote. Parang ganun, we can make legislation that safeguards the rights of the Filipino people. There, it does not mean na porket naging na allow natin yung foreign ownership of land or foreign ownership of businesses ay automatically mawawala sa atin ng ano, ang uh, ability to own land. Mapasasapawan tayo. Para ang, ang baba na tingin natin sa sarili natin na porket nagkaroon ng foreigners, we will be displaced. Hindi po totoo yun. Especially if we create this safeguarding, this safeguarding legislation. Actually, sa America nga, you can own land. Yes. yes. Uh, diba yung yes. hapon, binili ng Imperial Center, eventually binenta rin. We, uh, we can create laws that say pag tourist visa o tourist visa holder, holder ka hindi ka pwedeng maging may-ari ng lupa you have to at least become a permanent citizen a permanent re- uh, resident or or, an or you're an investor so we can create safeguards safeguards that basically say we we want you to come here if you will create jobs for our people ganun hindi pa kaya sendero di ba hindi naman magiging sendero yan di ba very good ay Last question down. Yeah. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Sir, question down. Since sa business side naman, uh, for the foreign uh, investors, what if, sir, uh, mga startup companies, mga local businesses, na uh, mas pipiliin din na lang, uh, mas pipiliin din na lang, mag, mag-work na lang sa mga bag, uh, foreign companies because of the higher compensation? Uh, oh well that's a fair that's a fair point but we're still at a very early stage no? so even if there will still be a lot of people na walang trabaho and so these people na walang trabaho or new grads na walang experience they if they, maybe when they try applying for a foreign business na matas magpasweldo, sasabihan sila, sasabihan sila, well, sorry, ang dami namin aplikante. At the moment, get some experience first and then get experience at a local company. Something like that. There will always be, and in the early stages, maybe the first 30 years of this, of having so many foreign investors coming in, hindi pa mangyayari yung situation na yan na pinakatakutan natin. We have to wait for 30 years. That's how long it took for Singapore to become a first world country. Takes 30, it, it takes at least 30 years. When they shop it, di ba? Even though shop him? Oh, no, China. Yeah. In Indian town. Di naman overnight. Di naman overnight. It took them. 1986 sila Vietnam. nagkaroon ng Vietnam. Took, 1986 nila sinagawa yung mga goy, goymoy reforms nila. It took them 20, I don't know, so many years. 2021 lang nila na umusa ng Pilipinas. Ay, wow. Pero, yung pag-umus nila sa Pilipinas, talagang na- naiwanan na tayo. Uh, uh, GDP you. per capita. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Preston. Thank you very much. You have other questions, we will just forward to our speaker for him to answer you. Thank you very much. Anyone for... else? Baka meron pa. Yes, baka may one more question. Uh, baka they want to have Okay, Nadal. Gutom na yes. mga tao oh, kaya na magtanong. Kasi ako, I'm free. I'd like to really answer all the. I mean, yes. not the can, you summarize, can you summarize your point and appeal to the public and to the politicians of the Philippines now? We are at a very historic stage. Sabi ng Professor Alex Magno, my latest news yan na kahapon, this issue was brought to the lap of the president. Na essentially, it's in his hands yata. More than, what is your appeal to the government leaders and to the public about? this issue. Okay. Um, as an OFW for the longest time, and I'm now a balik- recently 
return balikbayan. No? I would really like to offer my services to the people in the Senate who are yeah, against are now it. Based here. Are now based here. Wow. Well, can I bring someone to debate with you? Yes. Uh, I ko, get yes. someone uh, maybe uh, that might be against them, the law, kasi marami kang alam. So to to dress out the issues, I guess it is. Sure. I, I, would, I would like to speak directly to the senators. I am offering my services to give you guys a seminar and a Q&A session where you ask all your questions about constitutional reform. Over objections. Lahat ng inyong mga Ay, ayaw namin ipasagot ganito, ganito. Sasagutin ko from an OFW's perspective. Someone who has basically been so sick and tired na napag-iiwanan ng Pilipinas na nakakahiya tayo. Ako napapahiya dahil nandyan ako sa labas. Tapos, eh, why your country like this? Ha? You used to be richer than us. Ha? Why? Now, ha? you are so poor already. Why like that? Nakukuha ko yan lagi. Kaya naiinis ako. Kaming mga OFW sa Singapore, inis na inis na kami na napag-iiwanan ng Pilipinas. Kaya marami ang mga OFW na nasa Singapore, ang plano nila pagkatapos nila na nakapag-ipon sila, hindi babalik ng Pilipinas, pagka-Canada na lang o mga Australia. Bakit? Kasi parang ay wala naman pag-asa na naman, ito na naman tayo. Ganyan. So, mga senador, huwag na po kayong kumontra. Andito po ako. I'm willing to answer all your questions from an OFW's point of view. Hindi ako politiko. Di ako akadeno. Ordinaryong tao ako. IT professional. IT professional. Pero ordinaryong tao ako. Wala akong posisyon. Wala akong vested interest. Ganit lang ako na, 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 nakakahiya sa labas ng bansa na maging Pilipino na tayo yung supposedly best country in, in, in Southeast Asia dati. Tapos yan, talagang every country has overtaken us. Ano ba? Hihintay natin na... Pati Cambodia. Ang Cambodia. Ano ba? Hihintay natin na ang Cambodia, ang Myanmar, ang Laos, ay Uungusan tayo. Nakakahiya naman. So please, I appeal to you. If you have any issues because if there are things you don't understand, I'm here as a resource and I will answer all your questions. Ganun po. Sorry, pasensya na kung medyo galit ako. Pero, ay, inis na inis na ako na napag-iiwanan tayo eh. Okay? Thank you very much to Mr. Orion. Uh, ano, dum-dum, you know, no, ha? Uh, Orion Perez Dum Dum for a very enlightening session to discuss the controversial but very necessary uh, changes in the Constitution. Um, we have a tradition here, uh, Orion, na uh, right now, presidential candidate ka, movie star or revolutionary ka. Uh, we have a pandesal here, and since it's almost Chinese New Year, my tikoy tayo and my Gipsy Orion to everyone, Latikoy also. Can we invite Professor Alex Pardo to have a picture together? Here in back. Your change and political analyst. My group picture tayo. Pakihawak. Oi, oh, kinakot kayo ni, oh, kinakot kayo ni Orion. Alam na alam niya. And then, Please walk on to a Picoy also. Since Chinese New Year, February 10th, so I'll make gift for all the media friends here. Na, ano, picture tayo. Okay, how about Pantesan? Oh, that's a tradition here. Okay, how about this one? Ah, better ba? Yan, ikaling niyo no, at wali isa. Okay. Yes, yes. Sina? Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mag-lunch tayo and then kung may questions kayo, please uh, 
as si uh, Orion or si Professor Alex Pando. Thank you very much for this. And uh, may naisip ako bigla kasi maraming natawag controversial objection. I'd, I'd like to get someone to debate with you in front of the media on all these issues. Ang dami mong alam. Pwede kang, oh, okay. Against ba si Itaya? Against ba? 